Elon Musk reveals SpaceX Starship's Mars arrival. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of fireside. Hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day, it's a spacey day. We're talking about Elon Musk and how he revealed when we will see SpaceX's Starship arrive at Mars and he gives better details before it was kind of like a little bit vague now he kind of tells us when this should happen and we're going to do a little bit of math and see if we end up being correct or not you know I'd like to dive in a little bit deeper to this stuff I was reading an article over on Telerazzi as well as a couple other places space news here and there because if you're like me and you would like to see in your lifetime a man actually land on Mars it'd be pretty cool this looks pretty promising. It looks promising. So we're going to get into this article. And then, of course, I'll give you my commentary. And then we'll do some mathematics like we always do on the channel. I'll give you a little bit more information. Dig in a little bit deeper, right? Put a little bit more meat on the bones as we do on this channel. And then I want to hear from you down below. What do you think about all this? Think it's cool? What do you think? Do you want to see someone land on Mars or do you not care? I do think that it's amazing that that type of thing could actually happen in our lifetime. So let's jump right into this article. And as I always say, if you enjoyed the video, even the least, throw it a thumbs up. That'll be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not. If you are, thank you. Click this little button over here, notification button. So when I go live and when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. If you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out. Go to jcristina.com forward slash books. And if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work on this channel, there's a little thank you button. You can give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you want more Starlink, SpaceX, Spacey type of videos, I have about 330 now that I put together in the last, I think it's like 43, 44 months now. I'll put a link here. Don't click on it yet. I'll put a link here. So when you're done watching this video, click there and you'll see a lot of helpful how to's, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, how to do things, but more importantly, the why behind everything. Once again, this channel is all about putting the meat on the bones. <laughs> so the article starts out by saying Elon Musk just revealed when SpaceX will send Starship to Mars for the first time. Starship is SpaceX's mega rocket that the company has been test launching for about a year now. It will eventually carry humans to Mars if all goes according to plan, becoming a vessel to make life interplanetary. Musk has bold plans for Starship as he announced the timeline for when the rocket will first make its trip to Mars. The mission is unplanned as of right now. Quote, the first Starship to Mars will launch in two years when the next Earth-Mars transfer, I'll get into this in a second, transfer window opens. These will be uncrewed to test the reliability of landing intact on Mars. Intact is always good. If those landings go well, then the first crewed flight to Mars will be in four years. I'll get into that in just a second also. SpaceX will make its first trip to Mars in 2026, and then in 2028, crewed missions will begin. Whether these astronauts will set foot on Mars is completely a different story, but it would be a major development either way. Musk then went on to say that the frequency of these flights from Earth to Mars using Starship will quote, grow exponentially from there. He believes Mars will have a self-sustainable city around 20 years after. It's not really that long from now, really. Amazing. Musk continued with this, quote, being multiplanetary will vastly increase the probable lifespan of consciousness as we will no longer have all of our eggs literally and metabolically on one planet. That is the case. SpaceX Starship has had four test flights so far and is currently preparing for its fifth, although the FAA or the Federal Aviation Administration has not yet cleared SpaceX to launch. The Federal Communications Commission or the FCC, however, has approved the flight, but the FAA is truly the one who must give the green light. Absolutely the case. So we're kind of in a holding pattern as of right now. I'm going to say probably within about two weeks, we should see the fifth flight or the IFT-5 to actually launch Starship. 
test flight. And I also believe that we will see the super heavy, the lower end, the lower section of the Starship, the Starship being at the top, that super heavy, I believe, will try to make a landing, a precise landing this time, and be caught with the salad tongs or mechazilla, or as I call them, the chopsticks which is pretty cool. So we'll see what ends up happening with that. We'll see if they destroy the launch pad with it or if it actually works. Hopefully it works. So digging in a little bit deeper, like I said, put some meat on the bones like we do on this channel. What exactly is that transfer orbit? And I did some research on it. I put took some notes because I wanna tell you guys because I think it's fascinating. So this transfer orbit is actually called the Hohmann or H-O-H-M-A-N-N, -N, two N's, most likely a German guy. Anyways, the home and transfer orbit, the way that works or what exactly it is, it's a means of getting a craft from Earth or from any planet to another planet, doing it the most fuel efficient way. That's the bottom line here. How do we do it? What is the trajectory? And that's what that's all about. Just think of it this way. You have sun in the middle and then you have the planets that are revolving around the sun. Some people think that the planets are actually going clockwise around the sun, but they're really not. They're going counterclockwise to the sun if you actually look down on the sun from the North Pole, right? So they're going counterclockwise. Now, what this transfer orbit basically is, is a timing when a vehicle, a spacecraft can leave Earth and rendezvous with another planet whatever that planet is. So while the planets are revolving around the sun in a circular pattern, slightly oblong, but let's just call it a circular pattern, our vehicle, our spacecraft, actually has to go in an elliptical form. So what we need to do is go away from Earth, but also go away, further away from the sun to meet up with Mars. Matter of fact, let me bring this up. This makes it really super simple to understand so if you take a look at this, we are coming in on, let's say this blue orbit, this is the Earth, and pink is the spacecraft, right? So the spacecraft is now once again traveling in this elliptical form or this elliptical path, and then finally we actually rendezvous with Mars. Now, what's interesting as you can see there is that we are actually getting to the rendezvous point before Mars. Mars is kind of like pulling into the parking lot when we're already there. All right, that's just how it goes. So we're kind of coming around like this while Mars is kind of coming in a little bit hot from behind and then finally gets to the same location where we are. So that transfer window when we must leave Earth happens about every 780 days. So let's call it just over two years. That's when we would actually have to leave Earth to be able to get to Mars in a timely fashion, right? Where it's not pulling away from us and we're trying to chase it down. So. The window is very small. It's a few months, and that is basically it. Now, what's really interesting here is if we are to continue to test IFT5 now coming up, IFT6, 7, so on and so forth throughout 2024, and we actually think that we're going to launch later on in 2026 to Mars, what this means is our spacecraft, the Starship, would have to leave right around September to November of 2026. That is the time frame. You have to leave between September and November. And once you do, it takes anywhere between six to nine months to arrive at Mars. Once again, for the minimal amount of fuel and the making it the shortest distance. Now, if we were to launch at the very beginning of the window, which would be September of 2026, we would actually arrive right around March of 2027. If we went towards the end, let's say, we would be, let's say around November, and then we would be arriving right around August of 2027. So that is the time frame. What's really interesting to me and kind of mind blowing is if you were to launch from Earth on Starship, right, you would see Mars in the distance as a little orange dot. And what's interesting is as we're going through this same trajectory, Mars kind of stays in the exact same spot because once again, we're going to rendezvous together all the way around here, let's say. But what will happen is, is we would see that orange dot slowly get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger in the window until finally it's the size of almost Earth, obviously half the size of Earth, which is really interesting, right? So it would just be 
I, I mean, mind blowing to be on that ship and actually to see that orange dot get bigger and bigger and bigger until you finally it's the size of a planet and you meet up with it. Absolutely amazing to me. Also, just like a little tidbit, a little note, the gravity on Mars, even though it's half the size, the gravity is about 38% of the gravity here on Earth. So if I'm like 160 pounds, let's say, I'm about 165, let's say 160 pounds on Mars, I'd be like 60 pounds. So if you guys want to go on a diet, you want to weigh less, go to Mars, right? You're going to weigh a lot less. So it's kind of interesting. Anyways, I hope you found this information fascinating. I did. What do you think about all this? Would you be one of the people to actually get on Starship and go to Mars? Maybe not the first, right? You don't want to be the first. But would you do it once a few people got there? Maybe 5, 10, 20 ships? Would you get on one of those ships and actually fly to Mars and be one of the first to colonize Mars, like he said, I think it's going to be about 20 years once we get there for it to actually take shape and actually create a city on Mars that is self-sustainable. That's the main thing is he has to move, Elon, he has to move millions and millions and millions of tons of crap to Mars to be able to create this city. Right. So there's a lot that has to happen before we can actually populate Mars. But. They're doing it. And that is what is fascinating to me. I like the idea of having a multi-planetary species, right? Where, once again, like he said, our consciousness doesn't die as we slowly die, as the planet eventually dies. It's really intriguing because once we get to Mars, it's going to be much easier for us to get to even further planets maybe even out of our solar system, because we will continuously learn as we go through this process, right? So anyways, guys, I hope you found this fascinating. I know I did. If you want to get to Mars, let me know <laughs> down below in the comment area. I don't know if I'd be the first guy to get to Mars. I know like Elon says, it'd be great to get to Mars, but it'd be even better to actually land on Mars uh, intact, let's say safely and not kind of explode on Mars. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, throw the video a thumbs up. That is always helpful. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and my merch and my tees and my books and everything else. Check it out. Pick something up. Support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Peace.